color grading system. Although some organizations outside of Thailand have created a color-based ranking system based on the armband Muay Thai fighters wear known as the Prajod in Thai. But understanding why the history behind Muay Thai is key to knowing why it doesn't have a ranking system and knowing if Muay Thai has belts or weight classes is key to understanding the sport. So unlike traditional martial arts like karate or jiu-jitsu, there's no ranking system. Listen to the video and I'll explain why. So why doesn't Muay Thai have a ranking system? To understand why Muay Thai doesn't have a ranking system, we have to go back to ancient battle-worn Thailand when it was known as Siam. Fighting was very common during this period and Thailand was constantly at war, like the Burmese-Siamese war. And take a look at the post that I in the description to understand more about the Burmese Siamese War fought between the 16th and 19th century. To protect their sons and daughters going into battle, women from their soldiers' family would do a pre-fright ritual by tying a personal piece of clothing, which is usually a birth cloth, around their hands or arms before they went to battle. See my post here in, for more information on the Thailand headband known as Mongkol and Prijol. What is going on guys? It's Dylan aka The Combat Sports Guy. This channel is going to have everything combat sports related. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please like and subscribe and comment down below any other questions you want answered. We're going to do videos every Monday and Friday. So whenever you see Thai fighters with the hairband or the armband, this comes from ancient battle tradition to protect and give good luck to the men fighting in battle. So Muay Thai predates any martial art ranking system as the ranking system for most martial arts was actually inspired by the existing ranking system in the popular Japanese board game Go. Yeah, when I did this research, I couldn't believe it. Dead ass here, all the ranking systems in martial arts is from a board game, which is crazy. Devised by Honorubu Dosaku in the late 17th century. Before this, most students in different martial arts were given scrolls. So they were given scrolls. So yeah, you're on that black belt scroll, yeah? You're on that black scroll. Muay Thai has been part of Thai heritage and history for over 2,000 years. Link to my post about the history. So it predates the ranking system of all martial arts by a long time. This is why it doesn't have one and the reason why sparring is a key element in the art and why Muay Thai is so effective. It is a combat sport born in war. Traditionally, Armbands are given whenever a trainer thinks a fighter is ready to fight and represent the gym. There were still and no belts or colours to show you're ready to fight. With authentic Muay Thai, your fight record does the talking as there's no need for a grading system. Unlike traditional martial arts like karate, you don't, don't have a lot of sparring. So the difference between Muay Thai is as Muay Thai is a combat sport, you know, we don't need a black belt or a brown belt. It's just it's self-evident how good you are. Whereas in karate, a lot of it is because of the McDojo's, which is where people will buy fake belts just because they want that black belt. They, you know, might give the instructor a little bit of money. And what this does is this really waters down the sport. And it's why Chokajin Karate, which is an absolute killer of a martial art, has, you know, become less and less useful as a self-defense mechanism because these schools have watered it down. So whilst the new Muay Thai trainee will receive a prajold armband. This has historical origins of good fortune and to stop evil spirits. It does not signify a rank. The closest thing to a ranking system in Thailand is a trainer giving their student a Mongkol, the Muay Thai headband, signifying they're ready to fight and represent the gym. So if you're interested in learning about the Mongkol, please look them up the link in the post down in the description below to understand the headband and the history of Muay Thai. Typically in Thailand, most fighters are not training for leisure or hobby. They are trained to fight themselves out of poverty, such as the current one championship slash MMA Muay Thai champion, former Muay Thai champion, Stamp Fairtex. They don't need a ranking system to encourage them to train as getting out of poverty and earning a living is all the encouragement they need. So with other US organizations in America with Muay Thai, they give armbands to, you know, give the students a goal to work towards because you know if you want that black prajold you're gonna work hard for it whereas as i mentioned in muay thai they're fighting out of poverty they're fighting to get out of the circumstances they came from so they don't really need any incentive to fight it's just they're, they're you know fighting their job 
Whereas with Muay Thai in the West, people train for fitness and leisure. So creating a Muay Thai ranking system similar to traditional martial arts makes a lot of sense out of Thailand. You will never ever see a ranking system in Thailand, but especially in America, and I've heard even some other schools in Europe, ranking systems using the Prajod, forgive me for my pronunciation, are gonna probably become more and more common. So does Muay Thai have belts? As Muay Thai doesn't have a belting system, there are no red belts, there are no belts are not wear, worn or in Muay Thai as there is no traditional martial art clothing like a gi in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Although if we answer this question hypothetically, it's important to discuss other martial arts and how long does it take to achieve a black belt in each art before we answer how long would it take to get a black belt in Muay Thai if it existed hypothetically. So Taekwondo three to five years for a black belt. Taekwondo for a dedicated student, typically they're eligible for a first degree black belt in around three to five years, with some schools having a minimum of four to five years. To get the belt, you need to prove it a test to prove you understand what an instructor has taught you. You can fail this test and the reason why most people fail is like just taking a normal test. Anxiety. You know those pre-exam nerves? Mm -mm -mm. A kilo. Four to five years to get a black belt. If you train three to four times a week, you can get an Aikido black belt in around four to five years, depending on how often you train. What separates Aikido from other martial arts is if you have the correct mentality and be a good representative of your martial arts school. Even if you have technique slash speed and strength, you'll be denied your black belt without the correct martial art attitude. Whilst achieving a belt in little over two years is possible, you would need experience in another martial art that varies from person to person. Judo, three to six years to get a black belt. You will achieve a judo black belt in three to six years based on your commitment to the arts. With judo, you have the standard color belts with 10 different black belts, dans, from shodan, beginner, to judan, 10th degree black belt. To be a true judo black belt, you must have one or more tazobaza, which is a match winning throw that you can do effortlessly. What's the video above in my post of Shinjiro Sakasaki? The owner of Sasaki Judo performed various Tazo Wazas. The thing about Judo is, oh man, that's one of the best grappling knots because this little guy here will flip you on concrete and you're dead. You know, very few martial arts can do that. With Judo, getting a blue belt does not mean, sorry, a black belt does not mean you're an expert, but rather you're on the first step to become an expert. Like with all things in life, the more you put into it, the faster you succeed. And it's exactly the same with getting a Judo black belt. Karate, five years to get a black belt. Typically, following the guidelines set and followed by most karate schools, and depending on your age and health new chain karate, you should get your black belt in around five years. Whilst you can get a black belt in less time, karate masters emphasize the time spent learning a martial art to be very important. If you reduce this time, you can also reduce the wisdom and personal growth that all karate can teach you. And now, the hardest black belt to get in all martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, 10 years on average. The hardest belt to get in any martial art and probably one of the most respected. Getting a blue belt in my school, the belt after white belt, can take anywhere between one to three years based on your dedication to BJJ. Making the BJJ system the most difficult to progress as it requires the most map time and dedication. Because you've got to think, it takes one to two years on average to get a blue belt in my school. You've got to think, with, um, for example, with Taekwondo, you know, you're halfway to get a black belt in that time. So it goes to show how difficult it is to get a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. Belt promotions in BJJ all depend on when the coach feels the student is ready. And whilst generally they depend on someone's skill and knowledge of BJJ, they don't always. It could be about how dedicated you are or how well you perform in competition. It's objective because I know in my gym there's some absolute killers that haven't got their black belt yet. Whereas some people who got their blue belt and you know they would be beaten by the white belt so i think it depends on how seriously you're taking it the sport of jiu-jitsu how often you're going maybe the the fact that you're not late all of it would depend on your coach and what he or she thinks of you know your dedication to the sport and either way a black belt will take the longest to achieve and honestly i think it's a quite similar period to the hypothetical muay thai black belt muay thai 10 years to get black belt if a Muay Thai black belt existed, you would need around about 10 years of consistent training with a solid amount of ring experience to become a black belt. Muay Thai is a combat sport and sparring and ring experience is a vital part of becoming truly good at it. This is hypothetical as Muay Thai is the art of eight limbs and includes a lot of grappling, which makes it a lot more complicated compared to other arts on this list. Like in my opinion, if a black belt Muay Thai existed, 
your clinch has to be very good and anyone who's done Muay Thai knows how complicated the clinch is and you know it would probably take one two years of consistent training to have even a somewhat decent clinch and that's not talking about the elbows, the knees, the kicks, the punches. It goes on and on and on and all the infinite variations in all these combinations. And this is why Muay Thai is so much more difficult than kickboxing, for example. And if you want to know the differences between kickboxing and Muay Thai, please check this video. So both BJJ and Muay Thai are similar because they are so complicated and never truly be mastered. You hear Muay Thai experts such as Liam Harrison, who is basically a Muay Thai black belt, discuss how complicated Muay Thai still is to him. You're always figuring out new things and how to make known techniques more effective. So does Muay Thai have grading? This is what I'm talking about. This guy owns a uh, gym in America and these different belts connotate different levels for his students. So whilst Muay Thai in Thailand doesn't have a grading system, several schools in the USA in use the Muay Thai armband to denote rank. And other prominent Muay Thai gyms outside of Thailand have a belt ranking system. Each ranking system will be discussed. So you have the Bang Muay Thai ranking system, the Volve MMA Singapore ranking system, the Rufus Sport Kickboxing Association belt system, the Thai Boxing Association of the USA, the Fight Center which is in Australia. Bang Muay Thai ranking system. The Bang Muay Thai ranking system was created by former UFC fighter and K1 champ and two-time UFC coach of the year, Dwayne Ludwig. He took the commercial elements of Taekwondo and Karate and applied this progression over to Muay Thai. The progression follows like this. White, yellow, orange, blue, purple, brown, black. Unlike with traditional Muay Thai, when your progression is about how many fights you have, Bang Muay Thai has a clear curriculum from white to black belt and a clear path can be learned and also practiced online. And if you want to access Bang Muay, Thai's, Bang, Bang Muay Thai's online classes, click this link. To test for a belt, you must be in a Bang headquarters located in Colorado or a Bang certified gym. Just like with traditional art martial arts, the Bang Muay Thai ranking system focuses on respect and discipline. You can see the support when Dwayne Ludwig gives a yellow belt promotion in the video in my article. Evolve Singapore ranking system. The Evolve Muay Thai program is run under the well-known Sit Yok Tong camp, most successful Muay Thai training camp ever. Under crew Yok Tong Senan being the biggest Sit Yok Tong camp outside of Thailand. To read more about the history between the Sit Yong Tang camp, please check my post. Kru Yong Tong is considered one of the grand masters in Muay Thai, as he has produced the most number of Muay Thai champions in history. 57! Click my piece, my post here to see how long it takes to become a grand Muay Thai grand master. The Sit Yong Tong Muay Thai curriculum is broken up into seven distinct levels that are separated by training intensity, technical knowledge and the proficiency level of Muay Thai. At each level. Kru Yotong focuses on technique and the application with intelligence to understand how to use each technique. To progress through each certification, you need to have completely mastered the level before it. Click here to the official of all website in my post for the official certifications from Sit Yotong. So level one, novice. Level two, you know, you can read. So through seven is crew, which means teacher and Muay Thai. So check out the interview from the man himself in the video below above. So you have Rufus Sport Kickboxing Association belt system. Tuka Rufus is a well-known striking coach in the USA and a coach of former lightweight UFC champion Anthony Pettis, Alan Belcher, Sergio Pettis and also the owner of Rufus Sport competition team based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He has an online course designed to teach you his system which you can access in my blog down below. Like Bang Muay Thai, all the testing has to be in Rufus Sport, one of the many accredited gyms across the USA. Click the link in my blog to know more. He also runs a black belt affiliate program as some martial arts do not have a black belt of their own. So they need someone from Rupert Sport to accredit a new black belt, similar to Tenth Planet in Jiu Jitsu. So what this does is someone from their company, from Rufus Sport Kickboxing Association, will go to your gym and hand out black belts because obviously you need to have, be a black belt to hand out black belts. Similar thing to what Okay, the Thai Boxing Association of the USA. Here you can see their official projects. Founded by Ajahn Chai Sishu, the first person to teach Muay Thai in the USA, 
has a grading system based on 16 differently colored Muay Thai headbands that go from white, beginner, to black and gold, see the instructor that you can see above. This is the company's vision statement, so you can see what they're on about. To advance, promote, educate and instruct the martial arts of Thailand throughout the world while offering the student, fighter and instructor the highest standard of teaching, Thai boxing. Like other schools, the WTA has officially credited schools that are designed to teach their assigned WTA method and promote students through the armband, which you can see in my post. The problem with these schools is whilst they are excellent for encouraging progression and keeping people motivated, the belt system could lean towards Muay Thai becoming watered down, at least in the USA, with McDojo's. So this means martial arts to focus more on making money than teaching the people the martial art. So the fight centre, Muay Thai, Brisbane, Logan City. This might be where for Alma Unica is from, I'm not sure. Located in Brisbane, Brisbane, Australia, the fight centre uses armbands for promoting students under 12 years and a tank top singlet for students over 16 years. Many rankings are important, but the main things they care about are dedication, experience and skill. This causes a unique issue with the trainers, as someone training for one week could be a better fighter than someone training for six months. But just being better because of genetics, as some people are blessed. Should that person who's been training for one week get better grading than the person training for six months in the fight center, they think no. I've seen this a lot of times at my gym. Some people are just genetically gifted. They might have strong bones. They might have quick reflexes. And the thing about striking arts, unlike jiu-jitsu arts, sorry, unlike grappling arts, is a lot of it is based on athleticism. So I don't think you should give out a belt to someone who's been there for one week even if that guy could easily beat up someone else who's been there for a year, six months, just because of genetics and athleticism. They believe a student must earn their Muay Thai grading by placing a lot of importance and dedication to the sport and get rewarded with a grade. Grading should mean something. I think a lot of teaching grades like this, as I've seen people in my BJJ, as I mentioned before, get a blue belt when they're not as good at sparring, but it's more so because my coach saw their dedication in them. If you open a school one day, make sure to implement these visual values whenever you grade someone. Grading should be when students achieve something, no matter if it's preparing for their first Muay Thai fight or winning a tough fight. In the UFC, many fighters like Tony Ferguson and Anderson Silva were given BJJ black belts after winning via submission. It's the same with Muay Thai. Grading has to be memorable and a special moment in your martial arts journey. So, does Muay Thai have weight classes? The best pound for pound Muay Thai fight ever, San Chai. Muay Thai is a fighting sport and these weight classes are issued by the World Muay Thai Council which was created in 1995 under direct derivative of the Royal Thai government which was approved by the Thai parliament. You can see the website here. San Chai is known to be the best pound for pound Muay Thai fighter ever and is considered one of the best fighters ever. He used to give up weight which means to be lighter so fights were interesting for him and between 2003 to 2000, 2003 to 2014, he only lost two turns when the fight was equal. Against foreigners, the skill gap is so large, he would even go up to 147 pounds, which is 15 pounds above his ideal weight class. So Thai fighters, because they are so skilled, don't necessarily have to fight under their ideal weight. And you can see the specific classifications in this table down below. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content. I'm a small channel and every little bit helps. Hope you have a wonderful day.